Hey guys, what's going on everybody? This is Dane from NYYU. We'd like to welcome you to the Yankees Farm Report. Los, my guy, how you doing? <laughs> I'm good, I'm good, Dane. It's been a minute. It has. I missed you, man. <laughs> so the first thing we want to jump into is, I know we don't usually do this, but I want to talk about the young guys at the major league level. Mm-hmm. I, I think that we've seen a couple guys take some big steps. What are your thoughts through the first couple of series? Uh, well, through the first well, couple of series, I think the guy that stands out the most, it's got to be a battle between Anthony Volpe and Oswaldo Cabrera. Um, mm-hmm. You know, Volpe played good, very well in spring training. Um, Cabrera ended spring training, I think, over the last 12 games or so, hitting over 300, I would say around 320 or so. And right. he's kept it right that, and he's kept that uh, right going into the season, which that offense is pretty much being uh, held up by the two of them uh, and, and Soto. Right. Those three have been the driving force behind that lineup. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm really encouraged by the what we have seen from Anthony Volpe. He's doing what yeah. we asked him to do all yes. last year, which was yep. level that swing out. Keep level the bat swing, cut out the chop, cut up, cut out that uppercut swing. And, you know, he would have a completely different outlook. And I did say I reserve the right if he got rid of that, if it stuck. And, uh, yeah, I, I, I said if he got rid of it, you know, bumped up his average, maybe uh, he could get up to 260, 270. If he might get some all-star votes. Um, but the way he's playing right now, he might. I, I wouldn't be surprised if he's voted into the all-star. Um, I know it's very early, but uh, he's looked very he's looked that good. Yeah, he has. He has looked that good. The only thing that I'm a little surprised about is he hasn't run much mm-hmm. when he's been on base, but I think that's just been the situations more than anything else. Yeah, that might um, come. Mm-hmm. Waldo Cabrera has really, really impressed me. I, I yes. think that he looks more like the player that we first saw in 2022 mm-hmm. when he first came up and had that energy playing all over he looks like that guy again. He's figured out how to hit a little bit again. He looks mm-hmm. better from the left hand side. And as you know, that he was an MVP in double A. Mm-hmm. And he hit 28 home runs left handed. I mm-hmm. mean, the kid's a better hitter left handed. Let's keep it that way. And if he continues to play well, I think that moves DJ LeMayhew into a position where he's not being dependent on as much. Yeah, I think Oswaldo changed. He changed his batting stance a little bit, or his mechanics a little. He added um. <clears throat> Sorry okay. guys. Yeah, I'm good. <laughs> Sorry guys. Right. Um, Oswaldo added a toe tap to uh, his to his batting mechanics, and ever since then, it's just been uh, a, it's just been uphill for him since that moment. He says he's also been watching a little bit of Juan Soto, um, and he's it's given him a different approach, and and so far it's worked because, like I said. Um, since he made that change, I would say over the last 12, 13 uh, uh, spring training games, that's when you started to see the batting average start to tick up. And he finished well over 300 over that period. And going into the season, he's he's playing with he's playing with that swagger. He has his confidence back. And uh, yeah, the hits are dropping for him right now. Um, it'll be exciting to see. And it'll definitely be interesting to see what happens when DJ comes back. I have no idea when that's going to be. I've heard maybe four or five weeks. Who knows? But uh, let's keep right in the hot hand. Luis Hill. He looked absolutely, absolutely better than I expected. What he almost five innings, I think he went four and a third. Um, did have three walks, so there was a bit of a command issue. Um, he we we didn't really see that from him in spring training, right? Um, so it's just something to keep an eye on going forward. But he was tremendous. He looked so good. Uh, I, again, this is our number five starter. He's coming back off TMJ. Mm-hmm. You know, there's going to be little TJS. Excuse me. Um, <laughs> Anyway, there's going to be little things that he's going to struggle with, but mm-hmm. I don't know what he's throwing at the top of the zone that's classifying as a changeup. Mm-hmm. But that is the weirdest thing that I have seen from a starting pitcher in a long time, throwing mm-hmm. a changeup at the top of the zone at 93, 92 miles an hour. Is Just, it a changeup or is it a cutter? They're listing it as a changeup, but I think it's more likely a cutter. Mm-hmm. But I, I don't know. But mm-hmm. anyway, jumping into AAA, we um, had the tri- first series this week. Mm-hmm. What did you get yes. to see? 
Uh, Will Warren did not look good in his first outing. Uh, you know, it could have been the change. It could have been the change in the weather going from, you know, sunny Florida, mid eighties to, you know, it was like low forties. I think uh, at first pitch or something like that, that could have been it. It also could have been a little bit of regression or because of the letdown where he didn't make the, the, the team, um, or break camp with the the team. I'm not too worried about that. I've seen how he, how well he can pitch again. I'm not worried at all about that. Um, no, I'm know, not did worried you, about, did you Warren. get to see any of it? Yeah, I got to see. I mean, it was he wasn't even a whole inning. No, it it wasn't a good start. But there's going to be some spring training let down from not making the team when he looked like mm -hmm. he was going to be the fifth starter. You know, the weather thing's going to make the adjust. It it's an adjustment, and I think there was a letdown. I'm not worried a bit. It's just like throw that inning in the garbage. We'll see him next week, and he'll. I expect good things. Mm -hmm. Um, the other guy, uh, well, first, I know Durbin um, is the guy that has played really well. I think he hates, he's hitting over a little over 300 right now. Um, he could surprise, and I I thought he, he was a dark horse candidate to make this team. It didn't happen, but he's in AAA, so he's just a cab right away. Um, he's playing really well down there as well. I'm really – I've gotten a lot higher on Durbin since I saw what he did in the AFL. He played so mm -hmm. well in the desert. He just tore it up out there. And adding left field, you know, that makes him a, tr a utility player. He can play second, mm -hmm. third, a little bit of the corner outfields. And he's got that incredible speed, low strikeout. Reminds me a lot of John Bertie, actually. Mm -hmm. But um, I I could still get Chuck Knobloch live from him. And now that he's that, left field, even more so, but with more speed. That's a very good one as well. Mm. Um, One guy who's flying under the radar, who I thought, always thought could have been, you know, a fourth, maybe even a fifth outfielder is Brandon Lockridge. After yeah. that first series, he hit over 500. Um, he's played really well. I think he's also leading the team, might even be leading the league with four stolen bases as well. Um, but he's another guy that plays solid defense. He could play all three positions. Um, he gets on base and he uh he can steal a bag or two here and there. Yeah, he can. I think he's a solid player. I, I the only concern with him is the age. Mm -hmm. To me, he strikes me more as a fifth outfielder that you bring in the playoffs for speed defense yeah. and to come in and get a bag. But I think he's mm -hmm. a really good one of those. Yes. What do you think of Everson? Um, Everson also hit three. I think he hit 300 as well in the opening series. He did hit a home run. Um, he looked good. And hopefully it's something that can continue for him. Um, I don't know where his place in the organization is. There might not be a place for him, but if he can, if he plays well, you know, he's, his value can go right back up. Yeah. I think it's, that's what we really need from him is to, for him to get his value back up going in the right direction. And maybe at the deadline, you look to see what you can acquire. Mm -hmm. Because there's going to be get, some, they, yeah, and they definitely need him to him to get hot. Because uh, I don't know how much more I can put up watching Stanton strike out at, at those sliders down and away. It looked like wiffle balls against him. Oh my gosh, Jason cannot get back soon enough. I can't watch anymore, Stanton. I'm sorry. I know that G is accountable. I know that he takes responsibility for it. But that's only great is if you change something. Standing there and saying, I suck, I know I need to be better, is great if you go out and get better. It's cool. But, yeah. It's cool. But, but I, I, if I you need don't get better. I need, I, I need to get something for my $27 million you're getting paid a year. Yeah, exactly. So we talking about some roster assignments. There was a couple of interesting ones. Do you want to start mm -hmm. off in Tampa? At Tampa, I think right off the bat, right off the bat, the, the most glaring things were the omission of of Henry Delaney, Carlos Lagrange, and Kyron Delgado. I think anybody yep. looked at the roster and look, they had to look two or three times just to make sure that what they saw, what they saw. But yeah, I was a little surprised to see the three of them. Um, Lalane, though, I did read an article from Baseball America, I think written by Mike uh, Ashmore, who mm -hmm. did explain how Lalane was going back to extend his spring training. That made sense to me. Yes. And, you know, LeGrand Hay, or how do you say his name again? Yeah, like that. LeGrand mm -hmm. Hay. Okay. Okay. He looked, he's going to be on an innings limit too. It doesn't surprise me. Lelane is. Lelane is not. LeGrand Hay is not? I don't think he's on a limit. No, he he didn't miss any times. He he was one of their leaders in, in, in game started. Lelane was the one that pitched 21 innings. Oh, um, okay. Yeah, Le, LeGrand Hay pitched a lot more than that. Then I'm really confused by that omission. Yeah, I don't know what happened with him either. 
Um, and then regarding Kiner, when I sat back and, th and thought about it, um, yeah, it was a little myth that he didn't make the team. But then I said, wait a minute. If Lombard is on this team, Arias is already on this team, and even Tejada is on this team, where exactly is Kiner going to play? Because I'm pretty sure um, Roderick and, and Lombard are going to be flipping back and forth between shortstop and second base, is my assumption. Right. So there's going to be no I, place for him to get those regular I, bats. I talked about this with Pete the other day. I didn't understand that. It was very, very confusing. And then when you saw it back and thought about it, you go, okay, well, maybe they don't want to run him up to the 40-degree weather in Hudson Valley. You know, keep him down for a month and then send him to Hudson Valley or Arias, whichever one's playing better. One of them needs to go up. Are you and, talking about Lombard? Yeah. Yeah. Either one of those yeah. two. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I thought Lombard was a guy, a candidate to go up immediately. I thought he was skip all Tampa, all, well, skip Tampa this season altogether. Um, so it was a little surprising to see them both on the same team. Anybody else at Tampa surprise you? Um, yeah, well, um, Alan Facundo made the team. He's a lefty starter, so that made uh, had was a head scratcher a little bit more. Um, but he did pitch well in the FCL, so I, I guess I could see it. You know, push him out, get the next guy up. They have draft kids that they need to get on the FCL roster. Um, right. Ocel Rodriguez, I have no idea why he's on this team, bro. Um, that made should, no sense. Yeah, none at all. He should be starting the season at, at Hudson Valley. I mean, I thought he should have been there at Hudson Valley to start the season last season or last yeah. year. So I, I don't get that move at all. I don't either. Do you know if they're going to have him start or relieve or you have any he's probably, idea? He's a reliever. He's a reliever. So I, I again, I don't. I have no idea. Um, I have no idea why he's on this team. I see him as a reliever. I mean, I can I can ask him just a double check, but I'm pretty sure he's gonna he's gonna tell me yeah, reliever. Um, I know for this week, the Tarpons start their season on Friday. Um, Sebastian King will open up the, the open up the season for them. He was a reliever last year, so he's I guess he's converting to a starter now. Um, Kyle Carr goes on Saturday, and Cam Schlitler goes on goes the following day. Kyle's in Tampa. I thought he went to Hudson Valley. Actually, was it Kyle? Oh yeah, you're right. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. You're right. You're right. Kyle is in Hudson Valley. I forgot who. Yeah. I think it might be Schlitler that. Um, yeah, I think Schlitler it is. Follows Fukuno. I, I'm gonna have to go back and look, but I know the season is opened by um, by Sebastian King. He pitched really well as a reliever out of the FCL. He did make it eventually to Tampa uh, towards the end of the season, so he's an I that he's a guy that I'm definitely want to keep an eye on. Now jumping into Hudson Valley, any surprises there for you? Um, I'm probably surprised that Jared is still there. I thought he would start the season at Somerset, especially with how well he played in the Mexican Winter League. He was the Rookie of the Year there. Um, he was just on fire while he was there. So I'm a little surprised that he's still here. Um, another guy or one other guy that I, that I am interested in watching is Leo Pastana. He's mm -hmm. got a really good makeup. His issue has mostly been health. Um, but if he could stay healthy, he could be a guy to, to keep an eye on this season. And then Brian Henry's there. Yeah. Brian Henry's there as well. Um, I think it's just him and Kyle Carr, the only two draft picks from last season pitchers that, uh, made this team. Right. And then Jesus Rodriguez is still there. I, you, we've been big fans of him. Mm -hmm. Don't know what the position is, but the bat plays. And mm -hmm. the more positions that he adds, the more legit he is as an MLB utility player to me. Yeah, they have him listed as, an, as a catcher. I I'm, I'm definitely would not be surprised to see him playing mostly third base. Um, I think you're starting up the middle would be Serna and Rock Riggio is there now as well. Um, I can't remember who else is, what other middle infielders are on this team. Maybe Alex Vargas, um, Alexander Vargas is there as well, but I don't see him blocking or taking time away from Jesus Rodriguez. I don't either. I don't, I think that you're right with the middle infielders. It's going to be rock at second, Jared, it's shortstop and mm -hmm. we'll see what happens the rest of the way. Yep. Now, anybody else at that level you want to touch on? Um, I know. I think that's it. Now the exciting level with some head scratchers <laughs> there too. Yeah. I think the number one thing that stood out to me was Brock Selvage. Brock, mm -hmm. congratulations, my guy. That is an absolutely huge accomplishment at 21 years old. Yep. Um, I'm really excited about that. Tristan Reeling was a big surprise. Yeah, I think he what he's pretty much skipped every level. Yeah, um, he did spend some time at the FC at the in Arizona yeah. off yeah. the season. Um, 
I'm sure he would tell you was not as good as he wanted it to be, but I guess it was just uh, a matter of him being getting getting on the mound um, right. was was the win. Um, but yeah, it was it's surprising to definitely see him um, get the nod at Somerset. Um, but yeah, uh, regarding Brock Selvage, I'm really happy for him. I'm excited um, to see what Brock does this year, especially after what we saw in the breakout game. Uh, I'm expecting a big year from him. You know, I am too. Um, I, I really won't be surprised if he is knocking on that door by the end of this year. Mm -hmm. I'm very excited about that. Really, mm -hmm. I don't know. Is he going to relieve? Is he going to start? I, to send him to double A straight as a starter would be a little surprising to me, mm -hmm. but I don't know. Yeah, I mean, I got nothing of reeling. Like I said, I I only saw him a couple of times in the Arizona Fall League. Um, but other than that, I mean, that's pretty much all I've seen of him. The stuff is good. <clears throat> He's got a fastball that sits in the mid to upper 90s. Good cutter, good slider. I mean... Maybe maybe he's just going to surprise us all, and we'll yeah, see hopefully. why he was a third round pick two years ago. Hopefully, so. that's the case. Now, um, the, the other catcher, the other catch scratcher is the catcher position. Uh, to me, uh, this is the head scratcher for, for me. You got Ben Rice, Augusti Ramirez, J.C. Escaro was back there as well. Um, I don't know why Ben Rice is not starting the season at Scranton. I don't, I don't understand know. it. I don't mm -hmm. get it. I. I have concerns, as you still do, about Rice and mm -hmm. seeing him again this year show that power. I believe that the he's always going to have a great eye at the plate. He's always going to get mm -hmm. on base at a high percentage. I just got to mm -hmm. see that power again. And, you know, the Yankees have shown with their last few top prospects that they keep him at double A and then mm -hmm. short period at triple A and then call him up. Could you be seeing that for Rice? You know that I, my, I don't my get think, it. My thinking for Rice for the season was that he was primarily going to be the the guy to back up um Rizzo if Rizzo wasn't healthy from uh, the concussions. Um, but to see him back at, at Somerset is giving me a little bit of pause. Um, it's making me wonder what's next, especially since I'm well. We'll talk about it later. But I've seen Carlos Navarro playing at first base this, um in the in the past series. Um, but yeah, I, I thought Ben Rice should have started at Scranton. The hit tool we know is there. It's just the power we wanted to see if it was if it was that he unlocked something or if he was just locked in at that time, which is a big difference. Um, and, and and the other thing, the other guy back at, at catcher at Somerset is, is Augustine Ramirez. Right. And Augustine is a guy who needs rep because we need him to continue to work on his defense, especially if he's going to stay right. at catcher. Um, and then you got J.C. Ascara, who is probably. Um, I guess the Yankees like him. Um, they liked what they saw from his bat in spring training. Um, but for me, it's a thing. It's a matter of I don't want a player like that taking away um, at bat or reps from Augusti Ramirez or Rice. So where are you going to play him? And yeah. which leads me, which leads me to my next issue is that this team has essentially two first basements on it, right? Spencer Henson and T.J. Brumfield, and Brumfield right. the Gold Glover. So. A lot of these issues for me could have been solved by Ben Rice moving on to the next level, but here we are. And maybe yeah, it happens it, soon enough. Maybe it does. It, there's just, it makes no sense with Henson, Rumfield, Rice, Ramirez. Escar. Yeah. Who's probably going to get reps there. Yeah, just, it's, it's confusing. Now, mm -hmm. of course, we got to talk about the big guy in center field. Mm-hmm. I'm excited. Um, I'm I'm definitely exciting. I I don't I I've, I've said it, I've said it a while now. I did not I do not expect um to see Spencer Jones this season in the Bronx, um, but based off of what I'm seeing with Stanton, um, even Verdugo, who I know hit a home run today, but um, it's not completely out of the realm for me now. Right. If they need I, offense. I, I... I don't think it can be anymore. Stanton, like we said earlier, has mm -hmm. looked horrible. He's looked and, defeated to me. Yeah, I mean, he's the he's only guy. Like, he has no answer. Right. He's just up there and has no clue what he's doing at the plate. And if Spencer Jones is hitting like he was in spring training, you can't leave that down in double or triple A all year. You just can't. 
but that and, and that's also that's also you know depending on what happens with Jason. Um, does right. he return from his? Does he return back from his health without any you know any setbacks? Um, does he is he does he continue to hit? Um, when he's down wherever he may be, Somerset or, or or Scranton, wherever the rehab assignments may go. Um, so that's all you know. That's also dependent on that as well. Um, and then you know, of course, a lot of people don't want to hear it, but in the pecking order, Everson is ahead of, of of Spencer Jones. What happens there as well? I mean, Spence, Everson is already on the forty man. Do the Yankees really want to start Spencer's clock right now? My thing is, is that. I'm not sure. Well, Jason can play center field, but it's not his position long term. Mm -hmm. So what do you do in center field? I mean, as a, as it is right now, he is the center fielder, I think. Good point. He is the know. center fielder. And he, and he has to be the center fielder. Yeah. I think you're right, but I just don't think you can count Jones out this year with as good as he looked. If that strikeout rate is anywhere around 20% and we see the speed and power again. We might see him later this year at some time, at least maybe September. So. It's possible. Like I said, I, I initially thought it was completely out of the realm, but um, now I'm not so sure. Right. So who else you got there? Um, I mean, I think that's all for, for Somerset for me. Um I did. I was surprised to see Anthony Siegler under infielder now and not a catcher. But I mean, other than that, <laughs> that's pretty much it for me. And, and that's not. A, I don't want to knock on Siegler because I I think Siegler's an exciting player. You know, when he's when he's when he's playing well, he's pretty exciting. You know, watching him run out of double is one of the most exciting things in minor league baseball to me. Um, the guy is just a ball of energy. But um, you know, he just can't stay on the field. He just can't stay yeah. on the field. I, I'm not laughing at that. That's an inside joke between you and I. And <laughs> yeah. it's it's not anything about Anthony. I, I yeah. hope I hope the kid can stay healthy. He's yeah. got a unique tool set. I don't know how it's gonna work as him as an infielder, but if he can make it work, hey. Yeah, you know. Strange stranger things have happened. Exactly. So any what about the relievers? Um, well, you know who's there. You have uh Jack Neely, who I'm hoping takes a significant step forward this season. Um, so we could be talking about him maybe in the second half, maybe even early next season. Um, you have Bailey Dees, you have Danny Watson. Um one guy that I didn't I, I am surprised I and I don't know where he's gonna play, but um Harrison Cohen, I didn't see him on any of the rosters, and I don't know if that means that he's injured. Um, I haven't spoken to him. Um, but yeah, I was a little surprised not to see him on any of the rosters. That's a good point. I hadn't even thought of him, but mm -hmm. you're right. He should be somewhere. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Anybody else you want to get to? Um, at some point, nope, that's pretty much it. Did you want to touch on Nervaez you were talking about? Yeah, I saw Nervaez is playing first base, this, uh, first base um, in one of the games in the opening series. Um, it's just something to keep an eye on. They're really outside of TJ and maybe Ben Rice, there really is no other first baseman. I mean, I guess right. Tyler Hardman could play first base as well. I don't know when he's coming back. I believe he had TJ. Mm, don't recall when it happened, but um, that's pretty much it. There's really no depth outside of that. No, there's not. So I think Hardman's supposed to be back in like the next four to six weeks is what I kind of heard, but I haven't. I did see, I sure. did see him when I was, I did see him down at the complex taking grounders at third base. Okay, so he's working out, so he's probably not too, too far away. Yeah. Oh. All right, what do you got Let rest coming from the um, this week? I, um, nothing, just keep working. Uh, hopefully we can see the FCL rosters um, and the DSL rosters coming out soon. I think opening day is the first Saturday in May. I think it's May mm -hmm. 4th, I want to say. I want to say it's May 4th, um, so still waiting for that. Yeah, I'm I want to see where they're going to start my uh well we know he's going to be stateside. So he'll Yeah, be I saw in the I saw I think I saw an article from Pipeline saying that he was going to start an extended spring training this year. Um but it's funny cuz he hit me up, he texted me the day that the rosters dropped for the affiliates asking me where he's playing and I said I I don't know, I haven't seen anything about um you know anything about the rookie leagues yet, but I'll let you know as soon as it happens. But um yeah, I haven't seen anything still waiting. Uh, who knows when it'll happen? I mean, for God's sakes, we got the Scranton roster, what, like two hours before first pitch? 
Yeah. It's crazy. <laughs> it was. I'm going, where is everybody? How are we going to figure this yeah. out? <laughs> Pretty crazy. Yeah. All right, guys. Thanks for tuning in. We'll see you guys next week. Smash the like button on the way out, guys. All right, guys. Thanks.